Good morning, and welcome to the Community Presbyterian Church of Ringwood. My name is Jacqueline Fudge. I'm going to be the liturgist this morning. Um, I just have a couple of announcements before we get started. The first announcement is that um, the Congregational Care Committee will be holding a meeting directly after church. I'm told it will be brief. And the second announcement that I have is that our, I think, very talented handbell choirs, both the adult choirs and the two children's choirs that we have at the church, will be having a concert in the evening of June 16th at 7 p.m. It's a Thursday night, so please come out and watch the cute little kids and the very talented adults play their handbells for a nice little short concert on June 16th. Those are my announcements. Oh, yes, Mr. Crow. There will be grocery cards on sale. Evelyn oh, yes, there will be grocery cards on sale um, after the service. Evelyn Van Duchtern will have those. Yes, Tracy. Okay, thank you, Tracy. And uh, speaking of youth, um, Faith in Action will not be meeting today either because it's the first Sunday. Um, so you guys will be invited to stay here, and those who are old enough can participate in communion with your families. Thank you. Now we'll have the call to worship. All together in one place. It lifted the entire house, divided tongues, as a fire appeared and rested on each of them. to announce the hymn. It will be number 401, Gather Us In.
Friends, as we gather in this place, we do so with this promise that if we gather together and we name before one another and before God that we have fallen short of the glory of God, we indeed will be forgiven. Therefore, let us join our voices together in the prayer of confession, which is printed in your bulletins. Living God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, the mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. I proclaim to you in the name of Jesus Christ that your sins have been forgiven. Amen. Now, having received this gift of grace, let us show forgiveness and grace to one another through the passing of the peace. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Today we have so much going on in the life of this congregation. Some of you might know from the red that is donning the, con or the uh, sanctuary that today is Pentecost, which is the birthday of the church. Uh, part of this birthday celebration is that we will be welcoming God's newest Christian into uh, the family with our baptism later on, and we'll also be having shared communion, served communion today. I'd like to open up this space for any joys or concerns that you all are bringing into this worship service. Yes, Elaine. Okay, so two joys. The first is that Elaine and Marilyn's grandnephew is participating in the Special Olympics in Florida, and the opening ceremony is tonight on channel what? Seven. seven. Channel seven, so check that out. And we also have a youth concert tonight, which will be virtual. Um, and Maureen, I don't know how they tune into that. ringwoodfriendsofmusic.org and you can um, you can access it there great okay other joys or concerns yes uh, so I came home yesterday from a week long business trip which is always a joy for me and um, this afternoon my community choir clown sonar will be performing Rudder's Gloria and other music uh, with brass and timpani at the Westside Presbyterian Church in Ridgewood oh, okay. at 4 o'clock. Oh, excellent. And John Rutter has also composed a new prayer for Ukraine, which we will also be performing. Okay, so um, two joys from Lorraine. Uh, the first is that Scott returned from traveling, so thanks for uh, his return. And also that there will be a concert at Westside, Westside Presbyterian in Ridgewood, New Jersey, which is 
close to where I live. And um, the concert will be at 4 p.m. Okay? Others? Yes, Sue. Um, also living in Greenwood, what other sites have you made it? I went to school quite American. But today, at this weekend, I'm very English. And I'm grateful for the celebration of Columbus around the UK. OK, so celebrations happening in the UK for? Oh, the Queen. Okay, so um, the Queen celebration, um, and that's happening all over the UK right now. Great. I have a joy. Okay, Jacqueline. Um, my joy is is that well, it's the real joy that we celebrated my brother brother in law's birthday this past week, but we had a a um, wine pizza tasting where we ordered pizza from other local places so we could finally determine what is the best pizza in Ringwood. And I'm not going to say the answers now, but if you want to know the results, you can talk to me after church. But this was a fun idea for a party and a great celebration with friends. That's a great idea. So a brother-in-law's birthday, which is wonderful, but also that they had a blind pizza uh, tasting to see what the best pizza in Ringwood is. And, and Jacqueline can see you at coffee hour afterwards if you're interested in the results. OK. Others? No? OK. All right. Well, let us go to God in prayer. Living God, we give you thanks because you sent your spirit down to be with us. So that though Jesus is not here in body with us, we know that your spirit is always with us, guiding us, comforting us, strengthening us, walking alongside us. We give you thanks for the ways that you continue to work in your community and the special joys that exist on this day for birthdays and Special Olympics, for baptisms, and for um, concerts and ways that we can express praise as a people. We pray also that you would be with us in the darker places in our life, both here uh, amongst the loved ones that we know in, in our own hearts and also in our country and in our world. We name before you now in this silence those particular struggles that we hold dear. God, we give you thanks because you are the creator, the great physician, the ruler of all. And even with all that, you promise that you'll never leave or forsake us. In response to that great love, we pray to you, using the words that our Lord Jesus gave us, joining our voices, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is a, a special day for us. We are now welcoming the world's newest Christian into our community. Hear these words from scripture as we begin. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. 
By the water and Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. On behalf of the session of the Community Presbyterian Church, I present these parents who are bringing their child for baptism, Scott McDonald Sweeney and Maggie May Sweeney. And all of the um, godparents are invited to come up as well. All right. Maggie and Scott, do you desire that your child be baptized? We do. Relying on the grace of God, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to nurture your child in faith? Do you? We do. Relying, oh, do you renounce all evil and powers in the world which defy God's love and righteousness? We do. Okay. Do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you? We do. Okay. do we, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture the child by word and deed, by love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ, and by our fellowship, strengthen their family ties to the household of God. If you do, then please answer, we do. We do. Right. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling for order and life. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into freedom. In the waters of jo the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By his death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to life eternal. We thank you, O God, for the waters of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. We pray, God, that you would pour out your spirit upon us and upon this water, that this font may be the womb of new birth. May this child be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. Bind her to the household of faith. Guard her from all evil and strengthen her to serve you with joy. Amen. Name your child. Emmylou Madison Sweeney. Okay. Emmylou, I baptize you in the name of the Father oh. and the Son. Oh, goodness gracious. We're going to make it. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, uphold Emmylou by your Holy Spirit. Give her the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. Emilu, child of the covenant, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit in the waters of baptism, and you have been marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let's give them a welcome, especially to Emmy Lou, the, the world's newest Christian. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so no. much. Friends, in response to this grace and to this joy, let us continue with our worship service with our next hymn, number 361, O Christ the Great Foundation. <laughs>
So you all will notice behind me there is a screen, which is a little bit unusual. Because today is the birthday of the church, it's a day when we celebrate that the church was never a building. It's always a community. And so we will be looking at the scripture, and I'll have a brief reflection. But part of today's message will be the work that you all have been engaging in and continue to engage in and will engage in the greater world outside of these four walls, out in the community, both in New Jersey, nationwide, and in our country, the United States, and all over the world. Uh, so that being said, uh, sit back, enjoy the different presentations from our three different speakers. And I'm very grateful that they have agreed to come and speak. Today's reading comes from the New Testament. And this is the story of the beginning of the church. It comes from the book, The Acts of the Apostles, which is the second volume of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. The first is the Gospel of Luke, and the second is the Acts of the Apostles. This comes from chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Listen now for the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in their own languages and other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each one of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for which we say thanks be to God. Today is Pentecost. Today begins the great ordinary time season of Pentecost. Over the past seven Sundays, we've been celebrating Jesus' resurrection and signs of resurrection, the way that Jesus talked about what would happen and how he would defeat death in the season of Easter. And we have been 
during this season, during this 50 days, during these seven Sundays, we've been seeing signs of life sprouting up all around us. Not just flowers, not just flowers. We've also seen through our recovery from this pandemic, signs of life spreading, or sprouting up in our community, concerts and events out and about, more activity, more things that we used to do. And all of it boils down to hugs and laughs, connection and community. As we gather today, whether you're visiting here in person or if you're watching at home, on Pentecost, we are celebrating the birthday of the church, not this church, but the Christian church. And what we read in the Acts of the Apostles, Luke's account of what happened after Jesus was ascended, what we read is that it was a small group of believers, and what we know about that time is it probably wasn't more than 120 people. There were the 11 disciples, there were the women who traveled with them, who were part of the community, and there were other followers as well. They weren't extraordinarily large, but within this small group, there was a lot of diversity. We hear a lot of places that maybe we can't even pronounce included in the representation from the group. There are Greeks and Romans, there are Arabs, there are Asians, there are Africans, people from all over the world in this small group. And in our story for today, we see what they were waiting for. They were waiting for a baptism, not of water, but of the spirit. And they got it. But instead of it being in water or just with wind, it included fire as well, which is why we have red in the, the Pentecost colors. I guess there was a danger of it all getting lost in translation if they just showed up for a baptism of wind. So many people with so many different languages. The story of Jesus Christ and his good news came through in those languages and those native tongues that day. The famous evangelist Billy Graham said this about God, that God is like wind. We've never seen God in, in person, and yet we see the effects of the wind. There's a mystery to it. In our society, it's undeniable that there's something at work. And nowadays, people call it different things. You might hear people outside of the church call it a life force. You might hear others talk about the universe at work. For us, we talk about God and we talk about Jesus. And we talk about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is moving, not just back then, but it, as a living God moving today in the life of our community and out in the world. On this birthday of the church, after, after the years that we've had, there are a lot of ways that we know that the Spirit has been with us. In our lowest moments, dealing with isolation, dealing with sickness, dealing with death, the Spirit has been there as we've lifted up our prayers to comfort, to convict, and to hold us responsible, to guide us, and to come alongside us. The one gift of this time has been actually to realize that as not only this church building, but church buildings all over the country and all over the world, and also other religious organizations, synagogues and mosques, all of them were emptied out. But what we realized is that the church was never a building. We are a community that is bound together, not by these four walls we gather here, but what binds us all is the love that God sends so that we can accompany each other and be connected to our life source. We're a community bound by the Spirit, and also when we are nurtured by that Spirit, we are sent out to go and spread love and peace and justice 
out in the world. Today, what we are focusing on is those very ministries. And so I'd like to call up, I don't, oh, I see them back there. They showed up. <laughs> I'd like to call up Catherine, Jean, and Tracy to talk about Sun Servants, and then we'll hear from Rich and then John about these different ministries that come out of Community Presbyterian Church. Good morning. Um, I'm Tracy, and I am excited for Catherine and Jean and I to tell you a little bit about our national mission, Sun Servants. Sun Servants is a short-term mission ministry dedicated to serving God's people in need while sharing the love of Christ with them. With over 30 years of experience, Sun Servants has the history to make sure that the trips are put together well so that they are beneficial for those receiving assistance as well as those of us who are participating. Over the years, Sun Servants has provided mission outreach for communities all over the U.S. and internationally too. They help improve homes, schools, churches, communities, and all of the buildings that are part of that. They have built ropes courses and soccer fields and activity centers to help re and helped rebuild after storms of all kinds. Today, we're gonna to share about this mission and tell you what makes it worth our church family's time and financial support. This is a video collage that Catherine created after our last mission trip in 2019. It will help you see the many things that happened during the short week we're away. You will see photos that highlight the three different focus areas on a trip, worship, work, and fellowship, as well as footage from just the general community that we support. There's too much to share in five minutes. Um, it's just a small picture into the world. So if a picture is worth a thousand words, we hope this covers it, most of it. I'm Catherine. Um, I've been able to participate in all three of the trips to West Virginia that our church has taken. They've all been amazing and they've honestly changed the, my view of the world for the better. And during COVID, we lost two trips that we were trying to go on, and we were only able to send some financial help. So I'm excited to be able to go back in person to West Virginia this year. Um, when we go, youth groups from all over the US join together to create the mission team, and it truly makes a difference in someone's life. Some jobs are hard and others are easy, but they're all really important. On the past trip that we did that this video is about, we worked on extensive bathroom repairs, replacing part of the floor in Miss Justice's bedroom, and we rebuilt part of her deck so that she could continue using her back door. Not only do we work in a home, we get to know the family that lives there and we get to learn about their history. By the end of the week, we've built a relationship with them that's real and we're invested in the families we've worked with and we've built friendships with the members of our crew. The work that is to be completed in a week's trip at first seems impossible, then unlikely, then maybe doable, and then suddenly it's achievable. While we cannot solve their poverty, we cannot create new jobs or bring the grocery stores closer to them, what we can do is help where it is needed most. We can be a part of the team that repairs hundreds of homes in West Virginia, Virginia, and Tennessee. We can provide the financial means and the physical labor to help keep these people safe at home. We are part of a team that provides labor and make those jobs happen. And that is important, but just as important as being part of the team that pays for the supplies that allows the work to occur. This year, we're hoping we can do both and make the biggest impact we can in Panther, West Virginia. From Windows Harvest in Chattanooga, Tennessee, to Panther Christian Outreach in West Virginia, no matter where we go, the need is the same. A roof, a floor, safe stairs, running water, a simple place to rest. We take so much for granted in our world, the poverty that these areas exist to us is foreign. But in their day-to-day -day lives, this poverty is real. While we cannot fix the poverty that they uh, live in, we can make a difference to, for those to help. We've been fortunate to be part of this mission outreach for 10 years. Um, we were talking last night and Catherine was like, was it really 10 years? But it really is. Um, we've been doing this for quite a while now. Um, 
We've gone on trips to both Tennessee and West Virginia, and um, most of our work has to do with home repair. Many of the homes we work with are in desperate need of repairs and maintenance. Our teams, have been, our teams in past have repaired floors, steps, porches, and decks. We have put on roofs and rebuilt bathrooms. We have scraped and painted, and if you've ever heard me talk before, we've painted and painted and painted. Um, we've pulled up carpet and laid new flooring, run new pipe. But what we have received in exchange is so much more. We have built relationships with other groups. We have learned how to help others and provide assistance without any expectation of return. We love the relationships we have formed with Sun Servants and are so excited to continue our work with them in the future. The future for us is really close. The next mission trip is less than, or is right at a month away. And you're gonna hear a lot about this in the very immediate future. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Rich. Hi, I'm uh, Rich Crow. I've been a uh, member here for 32 years. So um, I did some research on uh, CFA and uh, I discovered that the uh, CFA was formed in 1976 by the late singer Harry Chapin. I uh, did not know that. Um, and Bill airs as the World Hunger Year of New Jersey in that year and they celebrated their 45th anniversary last year. In, two, in 1990, we built the addition to this church, which was a gymnasium and several classrooms and, and, and a small kitchen. And part of that effort, we dedicated one room and the kitchen area free of charge to the Center for Food Action. So that's when they came to Ringwood. Um, in 2010, when I retired, one of my th two things that I wanted to do after I retired, and believe me, you have to have something to do when you retire. I mean, if you don't have a hobby, you better get a hobby. Uh, and two things I really wanted to do uh, was to read to the four-year-olds in the Skylines Learning Center. And believe me, you haven't lived until you hold court with 24-year-olds, them listening to a book. It's the most rewarding, and believe me, if you have a crappy day, after doing that, you don't have a crappy day. <laughs> but also, I decided to uh, take part in the Center for Food Action, which I couldn't do when I was working. Um, they're here two days a week. Um, when I first started, it was uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we actually had we have an advocate which interviews with the client, um, assess their needs, and then based on their family size, we would make up food packets. Now, they're allowed to come once a week, or once a month, um, and, and they do that. Um, now, since COVID started, we had to make pre, predetermined, pre-filled boxes, and then supplement it uh, with uh, cold items and so forth, but they can't come in the building yet. We're hoping that by September, we'll be allowed to have the clients back in the building. Um, that way we can, we can also service them with produce and bread and so forth. So it's been a rewarding experience. Just to have some, since I'm a math guy, I gotta show you some numbers. Um, last year, all the, all the um, components of CFA in Bergen County, sorry, <laughs> Amy's telling me to uh, service 157,794 individuals. And that constitutes 46,000 families. And they, used, they had $7 million worth of assistance, either in food or housing, uh, fuel oil, gas, 
and rent. So they, they took care of that. For Ringwood, in that year, we served 663 households, 1,426 individuals, 603 children, 229 total. I mean, the need, when COVID started, the need exploded. And when we first started, we'd have, on a busy day, we'd have five or six families come. And during COVID, we had between 10, 15, and 20 families come uh, on the two days that we were open. So the need was very great. One of the things we instituted here was, because we couldn't give out a lot of fresh items and so forth, this church dedicated itself to issue grocery cards to those individuals so that they could go to the store and buy additional things. It's been a very successful thing. We're the only one that does that, and it's only because of the money we raise here is dedicated to that process. It's been very successful, and we're so happy that we've been able to, to uh, accommodate them and nurture them and, and continue our, our service with the CFA. So, thank you. Thanks, Rich. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is John Lavoie, and um, I want to talk to you a little bit about water. But before I do, this church has a long history in really giving back to the community. You heard from Rich how long Center for Food Action has been here. Um, before, um, before I took over water, we actually donated uh, to a hospital in Chinamoya. We actually bought an ambulance, a generator, and helped them with medical supplies um, to keep that hospital going. But about seven, seven and a half years ago, we got together as a church, this community, all of us, and we said, let's kind of formalize this process. Let's, let's decide what we're going to do. And so what we decided is that we believe that beyond just our community, because this building is important and this gathering is important, but beyond this building, we needed to, as a community, reach out to others and help much like the Good Samaritan helped on the road um, for that person that was hurt. And so we've reached out to, um, to help. We got together as a group and we voted to do really three things. Shelter, which is what Tracy talked about. Food, which is what Rich talked about, and water. You have to be a champion in order to, or you have to have a champion in order to, to, to take care of any of these kind of mission projects. And so you've met Rich and Tracy and her family, and I'm, I'm taking care of water. So let's talk a little bit about water. So we've, we have a water crisis in this world. Um, and back in about 2008, there was about a billion people in the world that did not have access to clean drinking water. Okay, that number today is 771 million. Now, you say to yourself, well, gee, that problem seems unsurmountable. We're never going to be able to solve it. Except if you were one of those people that was the difference between 771 and a million. If you were one of those people that actually got clean water, I think you'd say that that was a very different situation. Now, imagine what 771 million really looks like. Think about that. The population of the United States, anybody know what that is? 330. About 330 million. So it's more than two times the population of the United States. What, what does that mean? Imagine that you all, your drinking water is Shepherd's Lake. That's what you have is your drinking water. And you're probably thinking to yourself, yuck. Well, I got news for you. You'd love to be drinking out of Shepherd's Lake, besides the goose poop and the, the, the little speckles that will be in the water, compared to the water that you'd find in so many other places in the rest of the world. So what have we done? What are we doing? We've raised, so far in this church, about $99,950 for Charity Water, which is a, a group in New York that brings clean and safe drinking water. Their mission is to bring clean and safe drinking water to people throughout the world. What do they do? 100% of the donations that we've made to Charity Water have actually gone to water projects. 
And so when we decided to sit as a community and pick these projects and decide what to do, clean water was our national, I'm sorry, our international mission. And in that international mission, what we decided to do is focus specifically on an area because you can't solve all of the world's problems. You can focus on a thing. And so we decided to focus on Cambodia. Cambodia has clean water, I'm sorry, has water, but it's not clean. In fact, it's not even as clean as Shepherd's Lake, right? And that water could be made clean with something called a biosands filter. Basically, it's a concrete box that the people in Cambodia actually make. And what we do is we help support getting the materials to them, the educators to them, the people that can have build them, and they build their own biosands filters. And we've actually made, this community has, has, has actually helped somewhere between four and 5,000 people get access to clean drinking water, something that they can do pretty much for the rest of their lives. They just maintain the, the biosands filter. But we've taken that one step for, uh, forward recently. We've decided not just to make individual biosands filters, but actually as a group, this community is supporting schools with biosands filters, furnaces, and clean drinking water by latrines and latrines themselves, along with education. So these folks are building their own biosands filters, they're building their own school systems. We're helping them put that together, we're educating them, we're teaching them about sanitation, and all of that together is really what our water program is. We've donated with, with the uh, $99,950, $50 short, I can't believe we did that. Not quite $100,000, we'll get there this year. Um, but in fact, with matching grants, we're actually well over $118,000, right? That's because of you. Those 5,000 people that have clean drinking water, those six or seven schools that we've actually built those biosands filters projects for is because of you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, one, one last thing. The call to action, really. Okay, there are pledge drives throughout the year. You can donate as a part of, of your pledging, but there are, do, there are pledge drives throughout the year. And so right now we're kind of in a pledge drive for what they're putting together for Sun Servants. You'll hear more about water, you'll hear about Center for Food Action as the year goes on. Um, think about those things and what you might be able to give as your, your gift or your treasure to support those things. And, um, and if you'd like to join us, if you'd like to be part of our mission committee, please see one of the three of us. We would really love some help. Thank you. So you all can see that even though we've had a pandemic, the needs of the world have not gone away. And uh, so it, I think it's energizing to hear about the ways that this community has continued to partner with and walk alongside those who are in need, both in uh, here in Ringwood, also in the country with sun servants, and then all over the world with water. Um, and like those early disciples who started out in Jerusalem and then Samaria and the ends of the earth, we, with the help of God's Spirit, can join together and join wherever we are to continue that work of Jesus, which is to spread his love, his peace, and his justice with all those we encounter. It's in the name of the one who was and is and is to come that we share these words of hope. Amen. Friends, we're moving into the time in our service when we respond to that grace that Jesus has offered to all of us that we've received from the Spirit. Freely we have received. Let us now freely give back from the gifts and the treasure of our life in this time of weekly offering. Dashers may come forward.
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the ways that you gather us together as a community, the way that you welcome us with the baptism of water and of spirit and of fire and the ways that you use these gifts that we offer to you to do good in the world, to love kindness, and to walk humbly alongside you. We offer these things to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Living Spirit. Amen. Friends, please stand for our final hymn, number 346, The Healing of the Nations. be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of our Lord. We hear in scripture that people come from all directions, from north and south and east and west, from Judea and Samaria and all ends of the earth. And they will come to sit at table. We hear in Luke's scripture, in Luke's gospel, that when the disciples were with Jesus, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them to eat. And their eyes were opened to who he was. Friends, this is the joyful feast. All who trust in our Lord Jesus are invited. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise that you have poured out your spirit upon us through the gift of our baptism so that we might proclaim your mighty acts in every language on earth. Your spirit is with us in all things. And from the beginning, the spirit hovered over the waters and brought forth all creation. You breathed into us the breath of life and set us on the earth to praise and serve you. When we lost our way, you called us back. Then you sent your own son to save us. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior and Lord. By your spirit, you named him beloved and empowered him to serve the poor, 
to proclaim freedom from sin's bondage and to befriend the friendless and the outcast. When he breathed his last breath upon a cross, you raised him from the tomb, breaking the power of death and opening the way to eternal life. Precious God, set our hearts aflame with a love for the truth and our desire to do your will in Jesus' name. Make us witnesses to Christ, and may our witness burn brightly. We pray that you would keep us faithful until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. We pray all these things through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty and all vulnerable God. And we pray these things in the name of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Friends, when Jesus was at dinner at that Passover Seder with his friends, the disciples, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them to eat. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of this, do so in remembrance of me. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant by my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. So that friends, every time that we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again and come again he shall. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Today we'll be having served communion, and so uh, the ushers will come forward. They will serve you all of the bread. After the ushers have come back up front and have received the bread, we will all take the bread together. And I'll, You'll know because I'll say, the body of Christ given for you. Then after that, you'll receive the cup. Friends, this is the table of God. It is now ready.
body of Christ given for you. shut for you. Please join your hearts with mine as we go to God in prayer. Gracious God, living God, the one who calls us all to this feast, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the precious name of our friend and our redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive this benediction. <laughs> May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen.